have with us Caroline, who is the co-founder and chief product officer of Natter Health. And she has been doing incredible work on child safety in UK. She's also an international school educator. So not to deep dive further, and we would love to hear from Caroline more about her work, her journey, her experience. And with that, I welcome you, Caroline, for our today's episode. It's so nice to have you with us. Oh, thank you so much for having me. Um, I'm really excited to talk to you. I'm equally excited to interview you today because Natter Hub is doing a great, fantastic job in UK talking about online safety, creating resources, materials for school students, particularly for a special age group of 5 to 11. And it's incredible. So I want to ask you by uh, knowing more about yourself, if you can share a little bit uh, about your work and your role at Natterhub. Sure, thank you. Um, so I uh, started my career as a teacher um, here in the UK and internationally. So I've taught in uh, the Netherlands, in, uh, in Barcelona, in Hong Kong. Um, and um, I've always been really passionate about the social and emotional development of young children. And um, I, um, I think bec also becoming a parent as well made me realize that there was a real gap in the market for um, a scheme of work or an education that preceded children having digital autonomy. Um, and um, because um, my most of my teaching experience has been with um, early years children and, uh, you know, children up to, say, seven, um, I really knew the power of teaching children with scenario based um, learning so that they could learn through doing. So I wanted to create an education um, that um, was going to offer children um, a, a sandbox environment where they could learn about the nuance of digital communication, understand the, what it means to be a digital citizen, um, and really learn the, the skills that they need to thrive online. So um, I had this idea a long time ago my uh, my youngest uh is uh he's almost 13 and I first had the idea when he was just one um and it just occurred to me that you know we just put children on the internet we give them screens and we just kind of cross our fingers and hope that uh everything will be okay but of course the internet was never designed with children in mind um, and so I, yeah, I set out to um, create with no te technical knowledge myself, um, but I, um, I'm a self-taught graphic designer, passionate about education. I understand how children learn. And so, um, yeah, I just set about designing a, um, a, a platform that looks and feels like social media but actually is really designed age appropriately for primary age children as an early intervention before they get their first mobile phone before they get their first um device um because early intervention is what really makes a difference so relevant points that you mentioned about age appropriate content safety by design of course when internet came children were not kept in mind, but now uh, children and people of all age groups are using internet. Yeah. Um, and you yourself have been an educator, so you know the transition between um, early age using of internet and uh, how it is different for them and now for the teenagers as well. So mm -hmm. to, if I have to ask you, like as an educator who has uh, been spending so much time teaching children, how do you think that Natter Hub has actually contributed in shaping the future of children, parents and educators um, in the digital spaces? Well, I think how we have approached it is um, by really focusing not on um, a huge volume of information that, you know, lo there's lots of online safety information out there, you know, for parents, for teachers. There's lots of and lots of information about 
oh, this is about Snapchat. This is about Roblox. Know this about Minecraft. You know, there's so much information, but that in itself makes it very overwhelming. Overwhelming for teachers to be to know where to, where do I begin teaching this? And also for parents, overwhelming because they feel like, oh, one week my child wants to do this, the next week my child wants to do that. I, you know, trying to stay in front of your child when it's a very, very fast evolving space is, is really difficult. So what we uh, do at Natahub is we flip it. We focus on the soft skills development. So the soft skills that underpin uh, positive digital citizenship. We teach children how to self-protect. We teach children the importance of empathy, open-minded, respectful behavior. We teach children to be really aware of, of um, the potential risk. The internet is a very ab abstract space. And when, uh, because it's such an abstract space, children find it very difficult to perceive potential risk because they, they see something on a screen, they believe it's true, they believe this person to be real, they believe the words that they're being told. So what we do is we we are really training children through our platform with a whole range of interactive lessons to develop the soft skills of critical thinking, to, to develop their digital resilience, to understand a hierarchy of reporting. Um, and we, we, we know that um, um, but, you know, children are going to use a really wide range of uh, games, platforms, software. So what we're doing is focusing on online behavior so that they are ready, regardless of where they go, regardless of, of the platform that they're on or the game that they are on or the digital conversation that they might be having or the interaction or the the ability to pause before they click or, um, you know, the all of these soft skills really have contributed uh, shaping a, a, a healthy caution around using the internet. What we say to our parents um, and educators is, you know, these are very young children and in the same way that we hold their hand when we cross the road, uh, in the same way that we uh, teach them how to ride a bike, um, in the same way that, you know, it's a good idea to teach children how to swim, we do it gradually and carefully so that then they are ready for true independence. And so it's the same with, um, you know, learning to, to be online safely. Um, it's important that we really handhold, remove automatic access to the internet and really go into this space with our children and develop the skills that they need to really thrive. It's not enough just to be safe online anymore. We know that we're preparing children for a digital future. So it's really important that we soft skills that they are going to need to draw upon if they are to really thrive online. Certainly, certainly. Uh, and also when you uh, mentioned about children, uh, and at Nata Hub, you are catering to a very special age group, which is five to 11, yes. which is very, very niche and very critical as well, because that's a time when children are transiting from, from their tweens, they're entering, uh, like from their uh, adolescence, they're entering uh, tweens and then into teenagehood. Yeah. And when you talk about um, age appropriate content, so um, when you talk about, um, uh, you know, you're talking about digital citizenship with them, uh, yeah. telling them about core values. So how do you think that, you know, children are able to set boundaries for them for age appropriate content? Because yeah. like you mentioned, internet is vast um, um, and it is abstract. So how well uh, through your programs, through your uh, initiatives, how are children able to set those boundaries? Well, I mean, first of all, I think it's really important that we don't responsibilize children with their own online safety. So in, in you know, similarly to other safeguarding, you know, we, we all are aware that safeguarding is everybody's responsibility. That's the parent, the carer, the grandparents, the teachers, the all the school community, everybody is responsible for the safe safeguarding children. And 
um, it makes sense to take a similar approach to uh, to being online. Um, so I think when you um, if you if we are creating a culture of healthy caution in the same way that, let's say, with uh, with a, a healthy diet for our children, um, it's important to mitigate the risk of, um, you know, uh, tipping into an unhealthy diet by by removing automatic access to every kind of food. Um, and we know that children will naturally go towards, you know, a sugary, sweet, salty food. Um, in, and the same with, you know, online use, uh, we would love to think that, you know, I'm sure it's the same um, in India as as you know, we want children to have a really broad um, base experience of playing, playing outside, playing inside, doing educational uh, activities um, having a really healthy, balanced um lifestyle enough exercise for example but we know that they will naturally they've been they've been coerced into choosing screen time because it's very exciting it's dopamine inducing it's really been designed to keep children on that screen as much as possible so thinking about that analogy of the diet what what do we need to do we all need to take responsibility for that relationship and and nurture those healthy habits and that's why we really um advise during the ages of 5 to 11 that parents are really understanding that they need to remove automatic access to the internet um if a child wants to go online and uh and or, or use a screen there should be a permission involved, you know, like, oh, mom, I need to uh, I go online. Can I use the internet? Oh, I need to call my friend. Then it should be a, a permission basic. And these are really simple suggestions that we can do um, because this helps create the idea that, oh, we need to be careful when we go online. So this is like the very, the most basic uh, beginning because of course, then when a child is asking permission to eat the sweets in the cupboard, then this means that the parent is like, okay, well, how long are you going to need on there? And who are you going to be talking to? Which which um, game are you playing? Which platform are you using? And what starts to happen then, it becomes part of a conversation that is not just happening once a year or twice a you know twice over the over the age group of five to eleven this is something that is happening regularly impactfully and this this all of this messaging look how many times we have to remind children to say please and say thank you we have to say it a hundred times and this is because we're trying to shape our child's understanding of our values of what we feel is important and it's the same when we are creating a healthy approach to using digital content so first of all i think the influence of parents is really really powerful in keeping our children safe now of course um we need to uh, once children are in that in that uh, understanding that oh i'm going to use the internet but i need to be careful so like i need to cross the road but i need to look both ways then as part of that relationship we are then including things like permission to download or um, we're adding filtering so that the child is um, only seeing a filtered selection of content. Um, we've got more conversations around following age guidance for using different platforms or using different games. Um, and really, I think by creating this culture of um, of healthy caution means that parents also feel supported in making a decision or saying no to certain certain content because we're not ready for that yet. Um, and recently there's been a really loud um, noise in the UK uh, around smartphone free childhood. Um, and one of the arguments for that is, to, is that if, if en masse um, we are talking more about smartphone free childhood it makes it easier for parents to make those decisions um, together collectively as a group. Now, here at Natahub, we're not necessarily advocating smartphone free because we actually believe that children learn resilience and uh, ex through experience. 
So we really advocate for safe use of um, of um, online content. And that is with uh, that hand in hand approach with parents, with parents understanding um, what their children are viewing online, what are they, who and who they are interacting with. That also means taking devices out of bedrooms, out of bathrooms, out of private spaces, because we know that with online vulnerability, uh, children are really being targeted to create this self-generated um, um, material, uh, inappropriate material, um, which is less likely to happen if they are physically near to a parent or a guardian um, when they are on screen. So, I think um, I think what we are what we are doing is we're putting the training wheels in motion during that age that age of five to 11, so that we are setting up the need for um, the right education, the right understanding, so that children have that caution, but they have the skills that they need to, um, to, to uh, access the right age appropriate content. But I think in terms of setting boundaries, um, you know, there are so many ways that we can set boundaries for age appropriate content. And um, I'm not sure if you're familiar with Trust Elevate. So Trust Elevate is a company that specializes in providing age verification and consent management solutions. And this really ensures the safety and privacy of children and, and young people online. And their services are amazing uh, in helping businesses comply with the regulatory requirements um, because they verify the age of the users and, the, and managing parental consent. So if we had this widespread, I mean, this would be incredible for um, allowing companies to create a safer digital environment um, to protect minors from, you know, inappropriate content and, and interactions. So... I think whilst Natahub deals with the behavioral aspect and the human aspect of um, interacting and uh, our relationships with technology and our relationships through technology, a company, you know, like Trust Elevate, who we are, you know, great advocates of, um, this, this is the kind of company that we need. We all need to pull together uh, to, to, to prepare this online safe world for our children. Uh, you mentioned Trust Elevate. We actually uh, interviewed Dr. Rachel. Uh, oh, previously. amazing. <laughs> yeah, she's fantastic. Yeah, so we already, uh, uh, we get the sense of, you know, what Trust Elevate is doing and they're, they're also doing incredible work because um, how verification is happening for children, especially uh, with the usage of band is quite interesting and how the integration of different platforms um, uh, gets approval for children to use yeah. that platform is uh, something kind of you know innovative as well um, while uh, at the beginning uh, of this answer you mentioned that you know we cannot give the responsibility to children so somewhere we have to shift the onus on either parents caregivers or educators over there uh, because they're the first person that every child goes to so yeah. um, having said that and um, access to internet like how you mentioned about uh, to internet and to uh, online content by children is vast and that also probably um, puts them into some kind of danger when they are accessing content even accidentally could yes. be an accident as well and could be um, uh, purposefully that, you know, intentionally also that they're trying to uh, look for some content which is harmful because how psychology plays, you say no to certain things, they want to experiment on that. So there are flip sides to both the uh, to both the conversations over there. So if I ask you about, you know, how can uh, parents and caregivers uh, actively safeguard children from online threats, while they also allow them to benefit from digital platforms, because you partly answered this question. I just mm. want you to kind of you know, a little bit elaborate on this and share about, you know, how they can do that. Yeah. And, and I think that um, how I would answer that is, is often with um, an emphasis on a, a non-techie answer, which is, Ironically, you know, with all of the positives that uh, 
tech facilitates, you know, the ability to stay connected, the um, the incredible volume of um, information that our children, regardless of their background, are going to be uh, able to to you know access and have and be able to process all of this really positive um you know positive all the positives of of having digitally connected children but our children that we are very concerned about is you know the young children up to age 11 and we know that this is a really critical period for personal social and emotional development and um and we know that this um, this development happens um, most successfully when children have access to parents and caregivers who are very emotionally connected to their children. And we know that um, they are spending, you know, having valuable time with them and they have an open communicative relationship because, you know, as parents uh, with children being online, there's a lot of fear. So when parents are scared, when parents are fearful of what their children are doing, there's a tendency to blame the child. <laughs> you know, I'm a parent. I I am not judging, but you know, I know that if a child says, "Oh, you know, this has happened," it, it it's it's a normal reaction to go, "Well, what what were you doing? What were you looking for?" And as you've already said, the content can find them. So I think you know, going back to the idea that we have to acknowledge that our children were not asked to be born into this digital era. They have been. And actually, if we are to manage their digital journey as much as possible and guide them both, um, you know, logically and uh, morally, um, and and pass on our values. This has got to come through our communication with them and our and our relationship with them. And I think it highlights the need for our children to be as emotionally intelligent as possible, so that when things are coming up and they're following people on social media whose values don't match our family values, we need to have a conversation around that. We need to be aware that children are, um, you know, exploring um, pornography sites really too young in their development to be able to understand, um, you know, that that's not the right way to learn about healthy adult relationships. Um, and we need to we need to really have be be comfortable with having uncomfortable conversations with our children because they are going to see inappropriate content and as parents it's what are we going to do to be that trusted adult for our child are are our children comfortable enough to come to us to say oh i've been com communicating with somebody online and they asked me to send a photo of myself are are our children aware that that is a red flag and that we need to communicate with the trusted adult when something like this happens. It's really, um, I think it's really important that we um, age appropriately are dropping in the right conversations so that our children know that we are available to them. Even if we ourselves are very distracted by technology, we ourselves are very good at ignoring our children because we have our head in our phones or our head in our laptops. You know, um, the pandemic brought the um, option for many of us to work from home. But actually what this also means is that we have the ability now to work even longer hours. And, um, you know, and I know that, um, you know, this is happening, a, this is a, a, a problem in India as it is in you know in in Hong Kong for example where parents are working very very long hours they are very distracted and often disconnected from um their children's um you know internal conversations and we need to remember that our children have been bo born into this distracted era it's not just the children that are distracted the parents are distracted as well so it's carving out that time to have 
the right conversations when they come up, to have that time with our children so that we are available to them, um, to know that um, you've had enough conversations around your family values, around your um, your spiritual beliefs, your, your understanding of how the world operates, so that you are still guiding your, your child around, um, even when they're not with you. And, um, I think this becomes even more important when our when our children are, you know, spending so much time online that their internal voice from their parents and their family values and their community and their culture is is really uh, providing them with the right foundations. True, because you mentioned about trust, and that is really important when we want to initiate conversations with children. Yes, to build that trust is all about of what children are doing online, um, of the difficulties that they're facing online and the go-to person for them. Until yeah. you develop that trust, they will not come to you and talk about it. Yeah. So when you mentioned about, you know, um, you answered this as a non-techie person. So I, I have a question for you, uh, for the tech platforms, being a not non-techie person, that what advice that you would like to give to the tech platforms while designing their products because that's really important and when these products were uh, designed children again were not kept in mind so this debate of safety by design comes in again and again that you know how we need to have products and policies which are considerate of children as well because they are using it so mm. what advice you would like to give to all these tech platforms um i mean i think for Again, children can't be responsible for their for their own safety. All we can do is guide them towards appropriate and inappropriate, um, you know, behavior boundaries, um, so that they go into a situation with a with a with a clear idea of what they should and shouldn't do in the same way that we do when we take our children to a restaurant or we take them into a bank or you take them, um, you know, to visit family you they they go into that scenario with a clear understanding of how how to behave and i think that um the rest of it really is for the the tech companies to ensure that they know who is using their platform that they write information and the right content the right age appropriate content is reaching those those minors um, there has to be something that addresses the um, the issue of uh, grooming, um, which we are seeing a massive problem with, with the Internet Watch Foundation. The results from there are really showing that there's a massive spike in uh, online vulnerability between the ages of seven and 11, um, where children are being groomed and coerced into creating this self-generated content. So this is this is a prime um, uh, issue that we are addressing through Nata Hub in terms of educating children around, you know, don't share your um, your image um, and, and your videos, even if you get asked 100 times. Um, so even the discrete teaching of different functionality like the camera can be really powerful for children to to take away in shaping their their online behavior. But I mean, from in terms of the um, the platforms, they need to they need to know how to uh, protect their their minors. They need to, to be able to uh, understand who's using who's using their platform. And I think you know the dopamine aspect of, of children when they are gaming, for example, you know, not being able to stop a game or pause a game or come back to the same level, you know, is really stressful for children and again just the everyday conversations around you know parents saying okay close the game down now because you know the, your dinner is ready but if a child can't close the game down um and oh no hang on hang on you know and then you've got a child you know finding ways to deceive their parents um, because they can't make the technology do what they need it to do and to extract themselves away from it. I mean, these are all the really practical, uh, you know, steps that I think platforms need to be aware of that are affecting the day-to-day -day behaviors of, of children 
interacting with the with the technology. But I mean, I think, you know, going back to the age verification and the consent management solutions, that has to be, um, you know, a, a non uh, negotiable for for companies who are creating uh, digital environments that are, you know, interesting for for very young children to use. And it can't be um, it can't be difficult for them to embed that kind of technology into into their um, into their platforms. Um, it just needs to be it just needs to have a global agreement that 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 is what happens um when we think about how, how you know inappropriate it you know um years ago um the th things that were children were asked to do that we now realize was you know highly inappropriate we're going to look back on this time and and say the same about the fact that children can just access any any adult content online definitely and we need to also think about uh policy makers like they need they also need to take this into consideration uh so what do you think you and what do you believe in the sense that what crucial steps that needs to be taken uh to create a more safer and a secure online environment especially when we talk about children globally because this is not only an issue for india or for e uk but globally yeah. this is being addressed so uh, what do you think about this? Yeah, I mean, I think it's um, obviously when you think about wherever there's technology, there's online vulnerability. Um, and yeah, absolutely. We, you know, Nata Hub uh, was launched and within two years we were reaching classrooms in 80 countries with our platform, um, which is, you know, just a reminder that wherever children are accessing the internet, they are accessing the internet, you know, with and are at risk of, of everything that that involves. Um, so I think um, it's it, it has to be um, a practical uh, solution to um, addressing the fact that we are all very dependent on our technology. We all have this very intense relationship with our device. We are all. Um, and I think the idea of removing uh, smartphones from uh, from childhood is is not really is not necessarily a practical uh, step um, because we want children to be able to learn through their devices. We want children to be able to have access to the education that's on their devices. We need them to be able to um, learn through experience how to deal with the bumps in the road and how to deal with <gasps> online danger um but so this means like a hand-in-hand -hand partnership with um any any company that's able to provide privacy uh software or is going to be able to go into lock down the certain kinds of content that children should not be having access to. Um, I mean, it has to really be uh, relevant to, um, you know, a children's children's rights that um, if they are if they are online, that the device understands their their age and stage, and therefore the content that's being fed to them is is filtered appropriately. Um, so I think um, we need also to uh, recognize the, the power of the positives and really focus on those in an educational sense that we can learn, you know, and our children can learn so much from um, using devices, but that the, uh, the risk has to be has to be at the forefront of all uh, design um to to mitigate that as much as possible i have no words to kind of you know uh expand this because you've put it so rightly over there and if you could just sum up your thoughts uh with a message for all the viewers out there um will be really fantastic because working in this space for over 20 years if i'm not wrong <laughs> being an educator yourself um putting resources together at Nata Hub. So if you can just sum up uh, the whole idea behind this of how we need to have more safer environment for children as a key message for the viewers. I would go back to a really 
simple, simple message. Um, and that is that we need to talk to our children as much as possible. Um, if we are truly connecting with our children, and that means as parents, as caregivers, as educators, and we are understanding their world, we are understanding their experiences, and we are doing that with an open mind um, and with their safeguarding at the forefront of our minds, we have a greater um, ability to lift the lid on what is actually happening. Because right now we have this disparity between what we think children are doing online and what children are actually doing online. So if we can, like, as you said before, build that trust with our children and um, really keep the communication um, as strong as possible. Ironically, it's the human part of our relationship that is going to be even more necessary as we move forward with everything that AI brings as well. We have to stay as human as possible uh, because it's through staying human that we forge the right bonds and connections with our children so that they know that they are truly supported and we've got a clear understanding of, of what they are doing um, online um, and therefore we can help them and guide them to make the right choices. Thank you, Caroline. That was fantastic. Uh, incredibly put your thoughts there. And I'm sure all the viewers who are watching this are going to benefit a lot because that comes from a different perspective uh, from an educator who has been practicing herself uh, and putting uh, the small pieces together. And uh, this is the result of uh, having Natahub uh, as a whole uh, initiative where you are talking to parents, teachers, uh, institutions and children themselves. You're also creating fantastic resources. Um, if you can take a chance of looking at it, please go visit the website uh, and you will see a wide range of resources over there. So thank you, Caroline, once again for giving your uh, insights, sharing them uh, with us. And this was beautiful. Thank you. Thank you so much.